Engine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, I think that it started there. Now, when when we see things like smartphones and we see Androids with so much uh, momentum now, it, it's quite amazing really to see how popular that. Uh, it's usually a branding thing, to be honest. I think when when you call something Office, and this thing is an Office week, okay? So going back, you know. Even Word and uh, not PowerPoint, yes, but the certain applications have their names implying that this is the thing. Like you have a Gmail account, you don't have an email account, you have a Gmail account, and this is like a very unique thing. You don't have a tablet, you have an iPad, mm. uh, and all the pads are supposed to be like a kind of a trademark. Suppose well, suppose they managed to get a trademark and pad, and they weren't the first ones to have that. But once you manage to make something synonymous with a certain company's trademark. That's a huge achievement. Uh, whether it's an architecture, a hardware ar- architecture, which you assume to be necessary, uh, whether it's a, uh, uh, in many, in many cases, you even think, you know, back in the days it used to be IBM compatible PC. Uh, so people think IBM. First thing they think is, you know, you have to have DOS on it. Mm. Maybe you don't really have to have DOS on it. Uh, and, and, and by achieving this situation where People equate the. Uh, I think Internet Explorer. You, you actually had the icon name Internet mm. in some windows. I'm not sure. Like if you go to menus, it might even just say Internet or access the Internet, and it, it just gives you these globe type of things. So you're supposed to think this is the Internet, and lo- lots of people will call them the Internet. They'll just say go on the Internet, click on the blue E, because like, they think this is the way to get to the Internet, mm. and and this is how they're educated to work, and. What you mentioned about Facebook, remember, it's not just a communication tool. Many people play games on it, and even multiplayer games and uh, network-based games, which you couldn't really do so well without a uh, without the API, which defines your friends, uh, their groups and things, because some of the games are based on the fact that you want to work with your colleagues or your uh, or your people people you know from school. And this is something I found out because I was sitting in a computer for someone. Uh, with Linux Mint on it, uh, and basically the way the way the computer boots up, she would go straight onto Facebook. I set it up so that it goes into Firefox and go straight into Facebook because she's happy just doing that. You know, that's mm-hmm. the game, that's everything. I also installed some games for her, about ten games from the repositories, which worked worked perfectly. Uh, and access to a, a, a Windows partition, and it boots in about I think 14 seconds, and that's not a very new computer. It takes about 14 seconds, which is a lot faster than the Windows side of things. So, so you, if a person just switches on the, on the computer, not like some of us do, they switch on the computer, they use it, and they switch it off. It's really important that it boots up fast. So you go to the computer, and all you want to do is just go to the Facebook account, maybe you check messages. And I'm not talking about myself; I'm talking about certain people or to check your email, they want to press the button and take just a few seconds to get onto Facebook to check their things. And if Linux is going to do it faster, it basically wins. Uh, this is one of the areas, for example, where Android phones and things will basically suffice for people to get their connection connectivity with, with, with other people around them. Yeah. Well, just before we move on to the next topic, um, just going back very quickly, uh, the first point I wanted to make was uh, when you're installing Linux Mint for your friend, you should have considered Peppermint, and that's a fantastic distribution that I've always uh, advocated uh, over the years. Um, would have done a far better job of integrating your um, your online services into the uh, desktop almost natively um, than Mint does, in my humble opinion. But talking about Mint for a second, I I posted this on uh, Diaspora very recently and on Google Plus because I'm currently using both services. And Linux Mint on my machine actually boots quicker than my uh, broadband router can initialize, which I think is a testament to to the Linux Mint uh, developing team. So uh, just a quick little point of uh, of note there. Not quite the same hardware, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I have a uh, I have a uh, VoIP phone that basically uses uh, C protocol. Uh, and that takes about a minute to boot up. So it's, mm. it's, that's no, but I mean, I, th- I think that uh, I think that shows the level that Linux is at, or certainly Linux Mint. If you know, something like your, your router is taking longer to initialize than your operating system is to boot, because traditionally it's always been the other way around. It's if we look back, Windows. Right? No, it runs Linux. Sorry. Yeah. If we look at the other way around, though, yeah, you know, with a Windows system, you're waiting what two, two and a half minutes, I think, is the average time for a clean Windows system. And 
so your 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 router is perfectly initialized by the time Windows has finally got round to giving you something that represents a desktop. So uh, it was just a little little mention I made on on Diaspora, but I think it was uh, I think it's quite pertinent. And uh, Linux Mint is a very very good distro. So. You mentioned this uh, today. I uh, came across a uh, blog post. Uh, it, I think it was titled something like "Falling Back in Love with, with Linux." And the story, uh, the first thing I saw, it said something about Windows 7. So I just said, I have to read this one. And he basically said, you know, Windows 7 just keeps slowing down and slowing down and things are breaking. Uh, you know, when you get the first impression of the operating system, you think, oh, this is, you know, this is very fast. And, you know, you give people a few months and apparently it slows down to the point where they just, they just start to boot Linux again. It just, it just boots faster. So I don't, I don't really think, even if, you, well, maybe if you install lots of demons or, you know, all kinds of from the mail server, I suppose it's going to take longer for uh, Linux to initialize itself. But otherwise, it's it's pretty much the same speed all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, I've noticed a few, I've, I've covered quite a few distributions over the last few years, and I've noticed a few minor speed differences um, by maybe 10 seconds, I think, will probably be the most. But when we're talking about Linux, it's a very different kettle of fish to Windows, which deals with boot times of minutes rather than... Yeah, so sort of 30 seconds, 20 seconds. It's and like this with Linux back in around, I don't know, 2003, it would still take about a minute or two for, you know, a reasonably okay computer. Hmm. The very same hardware, okay, so I installed Debian last week on one of my computers, uh, and the hardware there is comparable with something I used in 2003. Uh, and back then it took about two minutes to boot, and this one takes about... 40 seconds or something, mm. and this is a much newer version of Linux, it's a much newer version of KDE. So what's interesting here is that things are getting uh, more, uh, the experience is getting better, uh, you get be better graphics and better uh, things working, but the memory consumption and the speed is actually improving mm. at the same time. So that implies, I guess, that Linux used to be a bit bloated or it didn't use the same technology to try and bootstrap itself in a very efficient way, so it could actually try and cache things and put on disk. Uh, certain stuff that used to be uh, uh, pulled from the disk every time you start a computer. Uh, and and I, I think that Vista was really extremely slow to start. I think the first time Microsoft was trying to improve that after Vista was basically uh, what I call Vista 7, which is just a kind of a makeover and trying to, to improve the things that were weaknesses back then. Um, so, so this is an, another example of Microsoft trying to see what a competition is up to and having to catch up in order to just, you know, be comparable in terms of speed, in terms of functionality. Right, well, we've got our next topic on the cards. People that have listened to the show for a few uh, episodes, more than probably about five, will notice that today we're rather more organised. We started to introduce show notes for ourselves prior to the show, so at least we have a, a clue on the direction of the show. That doesn't mean it's any any less freestyle than it was before. It just keeps us a little bit more focused on the topics at hand. So with that in mind, we're going to be moving on to the Motorola and Google deal, which I'm hoping Roy is going to take the lead on again and uh, fill us in. Over to you, Roy. All right. This is my personal point of view again. And please just send me emails if you don't agree or if you have any issues with that. Um, I think that Google was... First, well, several things. The first thing that happened was in recent weeks, Google was complaining quite a bit about the patent system. It was accusing uh, both Apple, Microsoft, and to some extent Oracle, trying to collude against the, uh, the Android. Uh, operating system, which is, of course is based on Linux, or if this is a, uh, a hack around Linux and stuff like that. So uh, we care about that because because we think if Android succeeds, it's pretty much good for Linux. You know, it, it's always better to have something that's based on Linux than something that's based on Apple's proprietary uh, bastardized BSD things. Uh, so anyway, uh, Google was complaining about these companies, and I was assuming that Google would not be willing to be out of the ordinary uh, in the interest of shareholders and try to actually abolish software patents and make very uh, loud calls that we need to reform the system. So I was contacting some executives I know in Google, like even the head of the open source uh, uh, team and everything else, uh, and I was hoping to get some response from them. And then my suggestion was Google need to try and help us out abolish software patents because I suspected at the time based on reports and based on rumors that Google was trying to find out which patents to buy, 
how many to buy, how to use the patents to uh, use them even as a deterrence against the uh, companies which were colluding against the Android operating system trying to launch lawsuits and to put attacks on Android. Uh, and they gave me a response which basically was uh, suggesting that yes, they were looking into buying patents. So they